Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. If you have never been to a Barcraft, definitely go to one. If you've never been to Meltdown and are in Europe, drop everything and get on a train right, right after, after the Global Invasion event. And maybe after playing single player a little bit. Yes. And then you can go. Then you have the permission to go. That actually looked pretty sick. So you could have a Barcraft at a bar that's about StarCraft. Mm -hmm. That's that's intense. So of course, huge shout out to the wonderful folks from Paris for pulling that together. You know. The fact is, we've been talking about this a lot in the morning, continue to talk about it here. If you ever want to get involved, you just get involved. And the StarCraft community started completely grassroots. There was... no one even really had decided upon the word esports when StarCraft 1 was starting to grow. People, you know, saying competitive gaming, cyber sports, all those things. And it was just community sites like Team Liquid, like Reddit, that just propelled it forward. Yeah, and actually I get asked this a lot, it's really, really good advice, is that a lot of people say, well, what can I do? Like, what do you need done? And all that. And yeah. really the best advice is go find something that you like to do. Something yeah. that you want to do and just do it. Because you're not you're not going to ask your parents, like, hey, what do you need me to do for esports today? Like, no They're not going to assign you that. Yeah, no one's, no one's going to tell you what to do. You just got to go out there and do it the, uh, yourselves. And, I mean, Team Liquid, when it got started, that yeah. came out like when StarCraft came out. Oh, they, yeah. they didn't go ask, you know, Blizzard, be like, hey, what do you want us to do for you? They just did it on their own, and they've been around. Has it been a decade? Have they been around for a decade? Okay, is Hotbid in the room? Has it officially yeah. been 10 years? Uh, it, how, can you hold up the number of fingers of years that Team Liquid has been around? Do you know this lore? I'm pretty sure that they recently had their 10th year anniversary. Hotbid is somewhere there. In that, in that C. Hotbid, how many? 10 years? 10 years! Yes. Yeah, 11 years! Oh. Yeah! Right on. And that shows you uh, how how much awesomeness can come from just a lot of hard work. So Yeah, in fact, the the 15-year anniversary of the release of StarCraft 1 no. is at the end of this month, March no. 31st. Yeah. 15? 15 years StarCraft has been in existence. Anyone anyone buy StarCraft 1 on release day here? Yeah. Some hardcore netizens. I will say, I actually, uh, one of the best gifts that was ever given to me, apparently, like, if you pre-ordered the original StarCraft or something, you got a shirt that just says StarCraft on it, and someone, just I saw Starcraft? them, yeah, it just, it just says StarCraft, and it has a pro, the Protoss face on the back, and uh, someone at my high school had it, I didn't know him, I just went up and was like, hey, can I have your shirt, and he was like, no, and then the next day he gave it to me, and it's like, amazing. That w I really would have liked the story if he was like, yeah, and yeah. just took his shirt off and handed it to you. That would have been great, but, uh... <laughs> That's, uh, that's probably my oldest piece of clothing. It is falling apart. I look homeless every time I wear it, but it is worth it. <laughs> yeah, I actually have a CJ Entis shirt from the CJ Entis Pro Team. And like every single uh, Bachelor-style male, I should have hung the shirt up, but I put it in the washing machine. Ooh. So it like comes to here, it like shows off my midriff, which is horrifying. I think, first, not I think our the, first picture together, I think you're in that shirt. Yeah, I like put my arm around you and you could like see the bottom of my rib cage right? because it would shrunk so much, but I still have it and I wear it sometimes. And I sometimes wear it in the daily because you can't see from the stomach down, it actually gets cut off. That is an amazing insight into your world, Sean. Seriously. All about the early Brewdoor days. So speaking of clothes that are too small, what's our next video? Yes, in fact, the next video. You know, I, I do want to talk about the fact that a lot of the pros are known for that sort of stoicism, that yes. focus. I mean, I especially like the Muslim in the EG video talking about how it's just you versus yourself. You're trying to train, you're trying to drill forward constantly, and when you see these players on stage, you see them at their peak of concentration, and afterwards, just this burst of elation or this like complete dejected misery, just. Argh, all the things I could have done differently. But the fact is, when you talk to the pros behind the scene, a lot of them are just really friendly, goofy guys. It's true. They are, uh, they are indeed. I think Stefano is one of my favorite people backstage. I feel like a lot of times he doesn't realize that he's at an esports event. He's just like, oh, I have to go on stage now. I forgot to put on shoes. He has not worn shoes in so many interviews. So many. And uh, actually, a lot of the players are either very quiet or just like super goofy and hilarious. I think uh, Gritor, we were talking to him a lot, and uh, a lot of the players on Team Liquid are actually hilarious. Oh gosh, the Team Liquid players are amazing. If you ever get the chance to find one, just like shoot him with a harpoon gun and reel him in and be like, be interesting. And he will be. Yeah. Until they'll... he dies from loss of blood. Yeah. Now, I want to talk a little bit about Polth, because he's coming up in our next video. Now, Polth, many of you know, is a phenomenal Terran player. Are there any fans of Polth in the house? <laughs> Polth from Team Polth. 
Fault actually having a GSL championship under his belt in the time when Terrans were really struggling against Zergs. He was one of the few to continue to power forward. Recently moved to Austin, Texas to just begin his studies. Which There's is one awesome. person from Austin there. It was, woo, yeah, yeah, Austin, yes. Yeah, we study there. And actually, uh, a couple of Koreans have actually moved to America recently, yeah. which is... Uh, Violet was also living in Austin yeah, for a while. which is crazy. And they, they still... I, th I think it's one of those things a lot of people think, oh, they're just going to do bad now that they moved to America. That's not the case. They actually have managed to keep up, which is amazing. It's awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a chance to see a little bit of the fun side of the wonderful Pult from down in Austin. 